This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. It's amazing how many good ideas can come from people who are full of bad ideas. East Texas News Director John McCall was a broken clock who was right dozens of times a day and never seemed to get any credit for it. Most of us who worked for him at Channel 56 in Jacksonville, Texas, didn't... Well, we didn't really like working for him that much. We, we were frustrated. I guess that's the best way to put it, as opposed to saying we didn't like him. I always liked him personally, but he was just... He didn't... Most people think that a, a news operation is... You know, news is too sensationalistic. McCall was like the opposite. He never seemed to know how to make the most out of an interesting piece of information. Huge events would happen, like the first uh, military combat death of an East Texas person that happened while I was there. And uh, the competition, I think, did seven different stories about it. We just sent a reporter, and I don't think I even heard about it until, uh, you know, uh, many hours after it had happened. On the other hand, he was infamous for this mistake that he made in the other direction before coming to our little backwater. When he was a news director at a station in Philadelphia, a local politician, I believe, uh, called a news conference and blew his head off in front of the cameras. McCall let the video run essentially uncensored uh, right there on mainstream television for whoever happened to be watching. Although I don't know exactly how much of the decision making he made, he certainly defended the uh, the, the running of all that video, and um, this made him unpopular. But he had these he had these really certain really solid ideas that have stuck with me over the years. One thing he used to say was that a community which relies on private gossip to spread news is a, not a community that is alive. He said it was a job of a news department to get it all out in the open as much as possible. He also had this idea, there was a uh, story that we got sent on where we were, there were allegations against an employee at a certain institution. And he said, we have to either name the employee or not do the story. He said, if you just say that someone is under suspicion at this particular location, you've blamed them all. Then there was probably the most solid idea that he ever had, and that is that whenever you're filming something, you do whatever is least distracting. So if the if if there's a lot of noise, you would put the microphone very close to the person's mouth where it's in the picture just to get rid of the noise. And yes, the microphone is slightly annoying seeing it there, but at least you'll be able to hear. Or if you can, you keep the microphone out of the picture so that there's neither a visual nor an audio distraction. And there was the fact that no matter how many bad decisions he made, including hiring and firing decisions, he almost never did anything to intentionally humiliate anybody. Being boss wasn't a power trip game for him. Things could be a mess with him at the helm, but generally with him at the helm, you had some latitude uh, and some appreciation for doing something creative. I was Googling him the other day and discovered there's hardly any information about him on the internet. I'm assuming he must have died many years ago. He was a chain smoker well into his 50s or 60s when I worked for him in the 80s. I thought, uh, good or bad, he should not totally be forgotten. His ideas, the good ones at least, live on.